Welcome everyone to tonight's broadcast here in T. Kermit Tower Gymnasium on the Ron Smith Court where the Senators take on the Hornets from Henryville. Um, this game was supposed to be played last Friday, but with the um, inclement weather, the snow that came through, both teams decided to push it back. Didn't want to lose the game on the season, so they decided to just play it on a Wednesday, which is not the normal night for boys basketball. Normally, um, boys play Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, so we've got a Wednesday night game here. Um, on the on the cusp of uh, sectional coming up for both of these teams, where the Senators are going to be at Borden and Henryville, I believe, is at Paoli. I think that's where yeah. they go for their Paoli. their sectional. So, um, you know, it's a it's an interesting matchup tonight. The Hornets did graduate four guards from their team last year that gave the Senators a little bit of trouble. Um, but they do have back their big Aiden Head, kind of the go-to do-it-all um, player for them. He did break the career um, rebound records last night in their game. Unlike the Senators last night, they were successful. They did get the win. The Senators did drop the game last night to Rock Creek. So, um, you know, it's a it's a double dip for both of these teams. The Senators still have one more game to play this week. They do play Friday here at home, which is senior night with Shoals. But tonight they're focused on the Hornets and have to – this is one of those games that you feel like is a, is a must win going into sectional. You want to get on that upswing. This is a great time to do it with Henryville and Shoals. Henryville comes in with a record of 8-13, and 13, Senators 7-13. and 13. So, um, Keith – what are your thoughts tonight? First of all, a double dip in tonight. Yeah. We're back together again D tonight. Double two dip. Ni two <laughs> nights in a row. Um, <laughs> thanks for having me. Uh, this would be a big win tonight for them. Last night, I thought we had opportunities against Rock Creek. We just couldn't ever get over the hill. We were getting up there and doing good things, but then we just couldn't get over the hump. But coming in tonight, tonight be a good night to get a win against Henryville. And then uh, head shows coming in, get another win. Head two wins going into sectional play, that'd be awful nice. Yeah, which is exactly what the Senators are are wanting to do. They want to get on that upswing, um, you know, to, to go into into sectional on a positive note. Like we said, the Senators are 7-13 and 13 on the year, but they've played seven overtime games and only been able to come out victorious in one of those. Um, That's almost unbelievable, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. Seven just overtime. <laughs> just There's got to be a record, right? Uh, Maybe we broke in. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe. So Jamie Cummings in his first year here, seven and thirteen overall, twenty-four and forty-two in his third in, in, in three seasons. He was at Mitchell for a little stint before he was here. Jared Hill from Henryville in his tenth season, twenty-one or one hundred and twenty-four and one hundred and eleven. So, um, you know, has had some success there. The last time these two teams met. Henryville was successful, came out with a um, eight-point win, 54-46. That was last year, February 17th. But John Harold has the prediction, like always, Senators going to win by seven tonight. That's what the prediction was. That's, huh? that's what the prediction hmm. is. So, um, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, Should Henry, we take this to Vegas or just keep it here? <laughs> just just keep it here. Okay, but, I okay. mean, if you want to cash it in, you're, you're more than welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, like we said, the Senators, um, you know, the, looking to get on that upswing for sectional. They are going to play Christian Academy in that first game of the sectional 61 there at Borden. Um, not a great draw for the Senators, but also probably not the draw that Christian Academy wanted either. They were probably looking for anyone other than the Senators because they've beaten everyone in that sectional other than the Senators. Yeah, so that, that is kind of not who, probably who they're wanting to face. But Christian Academy, I was listening to the radio last night to the Corden South Central game on the way home. Uh, Christian Academy goes to North Harrison tomorrow night yeah. at the Cougar Dome. Yep. So that will be interesting how that game turns out. I know how North Harrison is a little bit down, um, but it would be interesting to see the outcome of that game because yeah. I feel like North Harrison is playing a little better right now. Right. I think they beat Crawford uh, the other night, and um, they've had some closer games. Yeah, they're kind of so on, a, on a little yeah. bit of an upswing. Which you can is tell they're getting better. Yeah, yeah, which is good for them. That's that's your alma mater, correct? You were a, yeah. a, a North Harrison. Yeah. Played in the Cougar Dome, yeah. I was a, <coughs> a Cougar for sure, but like – you know, it's just it would be interesting to see how that game goes tomorrow night because I feel like Christian Academy is a good team, but I would like to see how North Harrison can play them since they're on the upbeat right now. Right, right. You know, Henryville draws the, the 2A juggernaut in their um, sectional. I was I was incorrect when I said they went to um, Paoli. They'll go to Southwestern Hanover, but they drew probably the, the number one team in 2A, even though they're ranked second. 
Um, when you look at their schedule, they drew Brownstown Central. Oh, my goodness. Uh, with, with Jack Benner, who um, put up 39, I believe, last night in his three and a half quarters of play. So, um, you know, Henryville looking at that game, and that's going to be a tough one no matter who you are to match up with them. You know, Brownstown has played a predominantly three and four A schedule, you know, looking up and down their, their – uh, the Mid Southern Conference. Yeah, playing up and down, looking up and down their their schedule of the year, they've played two 1A teams, Evansville Christian, who is number one in 1A, and they're going to play Orleans today. Today, so oh, that's tonight or that's, that's tonight? Uh, or is tomorrow, Friday, 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 Friday. Friday. Sorry. So Friday. those are the two 1A teams that they play on their schedule. Um, everybody else is a three or four A, uh, with the exception of Austin. But wouldn't you want to like Brownstown, wouldn't you want to get tested with Orleans at the last Because, yeah. I mean, Orleans is a good basketball yeah, team. Yeah, and, and talking about a team that's been tested, if you want to talk about Brownstown, uh, Brownstown has definitely been tested. They went through, a, through a, a spell in December where they played North Davies, they played Evansville Christian, they played 4A Brownsburg, they played 4A um, Indianapolis Atticus, uh, and then Jennings County, which is 4A, Jeffersonville, which is 4A, and then they stepped it down and played Silver Creek. Yeah. And then stepped it right back up and played Carmel, which they lost by one point in overtime. Yeah, they're, so, they're so definitely they've, tested. <laughs> they've, they've been tested. Um, they come in, you know, Brownstown talking about Henryville sectional draw. They come in with four losses on the year. They lost to Lawrence North, uh, Indianapolis Atticus, Jennings County, and – one more, one more, one more. Evansville Christian. Evansville Christian. So those are their four losses. Um, so Henryville gonna have to get get some help. You know, maybe some some uh, miracles going in for their shots. You know, maybe maybe catch fire from the three point line. Um, you know, so they're they're not looking real happy about that no, that tough, sectional forty two that they that they draw into. Tough first round draw. But, um, you, but you know, I think I've seen where Brownstown's JV is undefeated too. So they yeah. must have some talent coming right behind all <laughs> yeah. that too. So, so, so hold on. Brownstown has two two bigs that are both six 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 five six six. The the Binner, um, you know, who is a Purdue recruit, and then they've got another one who just cleans up the board if you don't block him out at all. You know, you're focusing on Binner, and and he can come through and, and light you up for twenty just off a of rebound. Hard to match up. Yeah. Hard to match up. Yeah. So. But with the Senators tonight, this is this might be a hard matchup for the Hornets. They start a four-guard set. So, you know, the Senators do have some size. They do have um, a little bit of a height advantage if you want to if you want to talk about that. Um, you know, you've got Ian Rosenbaum, who's 6'5", and then Titan Williams, who's 6'4", right there with him. So you've got these, these two bigs, you know, that can play. Henryville's going to match him with Aiden Head, who's 6'7". And then the question is, who guards the other one? Yeah. Um, you know, because they go 5'11", 5'9", 6'1", 6'2". So, you know, they don't quite have the size that the Senators do at the at the forward, you know, center position. But then at the guard position, they may have more height than the Senators do. Yeah, like I said, it'll be an interesting matchup tonight. Uh, Titan, he gets in there. Well, last night he gave good effort last night. He got in there and made some big plays, got some good rebounds. He brings that tonight. He can handle his own with this big boy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm not sure that Titan is going to draw that assignment, though. I think we're going to see Ian. Ian do it. And if Ian gets in foul trouble, you know, trying to guard him, I would say that we're going to go to that 1-2-2, two, two, or as I was told, it was a, a – uh, let's see, it was a 1-1-2-1 one, one, one is the way they – one 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 one, one two one, two, one. one. Okay. Um, even though it kind of falls back into a one three one. That's what I, I thought it was a one three one. I thought it was a one three one two, but I talked to um, coaches today and they said it was a one one two one. Hmm, they okay. play that that middle up further, and he's kind of his own. It's not a not a line there. I got you. So like that like that a lot last night with Rock Creek. They they kind of struggled with it. I would imagine that um, Henryville might struggle with it a little too. Watching them, you know, kind of warm up. Haven't really seen a, a dominant ball handler. I haven't seen anybody that's going to be able to stay in front of Kenton Chase tonight. Yeah, like I said, I, he's super quick, hard to stay in front of, hard to guard. But I'm kind of curious too, to like see Ian on the top of that one, one, two, one. Yeah, one, <laughs> it's hard yeah, to hard say, to say, it? say that, isn't it? it? Is. Yeah, it's so hard to say. But uh, I like to. I, I really like that matchup last night too. That, that look he threw at him, and uh, Ian does a good job for his length and his size. So. Yeah, and and that's a that's a tough matchup when you play two bigs, you know, that are six four, six five at the one A level. You know, not a whole lot of teams can match that size. Um, and then to have Kenton Chase in the backcourt, 
being able to kind of get by just about anybody that you can think of. Yeah. So and on that one, one, two, one, Kenton was the very back yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. He so what what they've called it a, for a lot of times that back guy's called the warrior, and his job is to run from corner and he to was, corner. And he was, and that's his one job is to cover those corner threes. And you have to be a warrior to do that because yeah. you're because you're running the, the whole yeah. time. That ball's moving, and so are you. Yep. So. We're about two minutes away from the start of our game here. It is a packed house tonight because if you can't tell from across the way, even with our uh, our wonderful crowd cam down in the corner that's shooting across the way, it is cheer clinic night. Mm. So there are a bazillion kids over there ready to get out on the floor and cheer with the high school cheerleaders and um, you know, just have a great time. This was supposed to happen last Friday, but it didn't because of the snow. So they moved it to tonight. You know, Wednesday night, all these kids here, fans everywhere, crowd packed, almost like a sectional atmosphere. It is, it is. I mean, there's quite a few people tonight. I mean, Henryville looks like they traveled pretty good too. A few empty seats over there, but uh, the cheer clinic really brought these kids out, and that's good to see. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, the parents come with them, and that's that's a great thing when you're when you're looking to get ready for sectional play. You know, we're going to go to Borden, and that's that's a a, not a super friendly place to be in. It seems like the crowd's kind of right on top of you. So, um, you know, this is a great opportunity to kind of get some of that sectional feeling, you know, on a on a night that's not a sectional game. And then hopefully uh, with senior night coming up too, we'll get that feel again. Yep. Gym be packed. Yep. That'll be good. And that's a that's kind of a, a, a good thing that the snow came um, and, and, you know, knocked that out. But a, a kind of a bad thing at the same time because I know these boys wanted to play last Friday night. Um, so Coach Cummings giving his final uh, talk to his five starters. Same with Coach Hill. He was talking to his. Now they're lined up ready to go. So we are about 30 seconds away. We're going to step aside, take a quick commercial break from the IHSA. We'll have our national anthem, and then we'll be back for our starting lineup. At Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, we're not just good at insurance. We're good at Matt's one-car, two-bedroom apartment with a home office slash home gym insurance. You, yeah. We're good at Nick's SUV and farmhouse with a remodeled kitchen slash art gallery insurance. And we're good at the Wilbur suburban home with the two-car garage slash rehearsal space insurance. Have you seen my hockey socks? Have you checked your sock drawer? Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood. Some see a student athlete working on a shot. We see a powerful lesson in persistence. Some see a student preparing for success on an exam. We see a student athlete preparing for success in life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave we are back live here at T. Kermit Tower Gymnasium where the Senators are taking on the Hornets. The Hornets, like I said, going to start a four-guard set. The 6'2 senior guard, Hayden Barber, going to start for him, along with number 20, Landon Dobbs, the 6'3 junior. Uh, Levi. Oh, I missed that one. 
Number 30, Cody Craner, going to start also, the 5'11 junior, along with the big in the middle, 34, Aiden Head, the 6'7 senior, averaging 23 points and 12 rebounds. Double, double. Yeah. So, <coughs> Senators look like they're going to start their regular starting lineup. Starting lineup for the Senators, same they started most of the year unless they have someone sick. So starting first is number three, Jackson Cameron, the 5'11 senior, averaging eight points, two rebounds. Also starting in the backcourt is number 11, Holden Russell, the 5'11 freshman, averaging six points, three rebounds. And the third guard in the three guard set is Kenton Chase, the 5'9 senior, averaging 10 points, three rebounds. Then like we said, the two bigs, in the middle, you're going to see Titan Williams, the 6'4 senior, averaging five points, three rebounds. And the other one, Ian Rosenbaum, number 12, the 6'5 senior, averaging 12 points, seven rebounds. So, centers go with their same starting lineup that we've seen quite a bit this year. Going to be an interesting matchup. How do the Hornets deal with the size, and how do the Senators deal with the size at the guard position? It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for sure. We're getting ready to find out, though, ain't we? Yeah, real quick. It's about game time. Yep. You know, ain't much better than Indiana high school basketball. You you hit the nail right on the head. On a Wednesday night, you see the gym this packed and just the energy that you feel in the gym. Ain't nothing like it. So, Senators going to jump center here. Titan Williams going to jump against Aiden Head. Boy, he is big, ain't he? Yeah. I thought, you know, Ian looks big out there, and yeah. Titan looks big, but then you, you see him, and he's got a, they definitely tell he's got a few more inches. Titan got up there, though. Senators with the ball. They're going to start off in their offense. Around comes Holden Russell. Feeds it to Rosenbaum at the elbow. Nice pump fake there by him. Leaves it off to Titan Williams. Good move, Titan. Leaves Good that move. one a little short. Going to come out with the rebound and go the other way. Like we're starting out man to man. Yep. Hey, look on your sheet over there. What's 22's last name? Yeah, that's probably going to be a hard no for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I thought I made a typo. But we're going to wait for Claude to announce it, and then we'll see how, how he pronounces it. I wouldn't want to say I, mean, I don't even know, really. I can't, I can't make it out. Let's just go with Levi. Yeah. Aiden Head with his first bucket of the night. And just work it around. Feeds it to Titan Williams on the far side. Leaves it off to Russell. Russell with the floater. Bang, knocks that one in. Good shot, Holden. Ties it up at two. There's a deep three. Cody Kramer with that one. Hornets out with a 5-2 lead here. Senators working it around. Kitten Chase goes. goes down the lane. Going to get a foul on Levi. Here's our chance. We're going to hear how to pronounce this one. Leachanu, I guess. Leachanu? I guess. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and apologize for that one. Leachanu, Leachanu. Kenton Chase to the line. First one rims around. No good. Like you were talking about, Craig, we got to see the speed right there. You got the blow by, got the foul, got to the rim. Yeah, which is what we need to see out of Kenton. Mm -hmm. He's a hard one to guard. Second one, also no good. They come out with the rebound. Here we go, first look at it tonight, Craig. Yep. One, two, one, one. Oh, 
Very nice job moving that ball around. That's a three-point miss. Jackson Cameron comes out with the rebound. Quickly ahead to Titan Williams. Leaves it off to Rosenbaum, a little pump fake, no go there. Russell gets by, gets him on his shoulder. Kicks it out to Cameron. Cameron looks at a three, nothing there. Titan Williams looking to make his move. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, going to be a foul there. That's Cody Craner. Going to be his first, team second. Senators still trail 5-2. to two. That one goes all the way in the backcourt to Titan Williams. He hands it off to Holden Russell. Rosenbaum trying to get oh. position. They get it to him. Cameron on the baseline. Good knocks dish. that one in. Good dish there. Cuts the lead to one. Good ball movement. You like to see that early. Yeah. Senator's still in their uh, zone here. On its moving the ball around. That's a three point miss. Rosenbaum with the rebound. Oh. And then we're going to turn it over. That's the first turnover for the Senators. So. Colton Brown going to come in for Titan Williams at the 418 mark. Comes in, Senators with a quick trap. There it is. That's a good steal off of it. Quickly thrown out ahead to Rosenbaum. Dunk it. He thought about it, just didn't get up quite high enough. Going to be Ian's first two-point bucket. Senators lead by one. And now we went back to a 2-3. Yeah, 2-3. Eh? Head with the pass over in the corner. Nothing going there for them. They're working, trying to feed him the ball down in the post, but haven't really been able to get it to him yet in this zone. Hard to post up on somebody when you're in a zone. Mm -hmm. Ian's doing a good job with him right now down there. I like all the different looks on defense for throwing yeah. at him. Head gets in the lane. One more pass. That is Kramer for three. That one no good. Going to be Senator Ball. You know, to break that rebounding record, uh, I always thought Dennis Rodman was a great rebounder. Um, I think you just have a knack for where yeah. the, you feel like where the ball is going to come off. You know, and it's, it's, just, it's just a knack that you're, I think you have or you don't have. But he's really good at his instincts of getting to where the ball should be. Yeah, well, he gets it honest. His mom was an all-state softball player oh, really? uh, for Clarksville. So back when they made their state run, Rosenbaum misses that one. He's strong with it, too, when he rebounds it. Yeah. Henryville swings it around the top, looking for a cutter. They get one through, but with the zone, they quickly collapse on it. Quick step, nothing there. One more pass into the corner. Still not able to get it to anybody. Head looking to post on Rosenbaum. Still working. Very patient here. That's a good job by... The Hornets, 2.15 to go here in the first quarter of play. There's a floater for Barber. Knocks that one in, his first two-point bucket. Hornets back out ahead. Rosenbaum with the jumper. That one no good. Head with the rebound. Ooh, good, good athletic move there. Yeah. <laughs> Gets it knocked out of his hand and then takes it back. I'm not sure how he did that. Yep, Barber with a second bucket. Out to a six uh, to nine 
sorry, a three-point lead for the Hornets. Couldn't get that out. I was trying to say the score and the lead all at once. Rosenbaum around two. Um, Kenton chasing it, swings it around to Brown on the yes, wing. Sir. He knocks that one in. If they're going to keep that matchup with him guarding Colton, yeah. that's going to be a problem. Yep. Even though he's long, I don't know that he can cover no. that much ground. Mm -hmm. He's giving Colton a three. Yeah. You know? that's a, I mean, Colton's a good shooter. That's the last <laughs> person who wants to sit there and just give him free shots. Yeah. He'd burn you up. Center's come out with a trap. One more pass into the corner. He gets by baseline, goes up and misses that one. Rosenbaum takes that one away. Nobody's on him. Back to Kenton oh, Chase. Back to yes, Brown for three. Good job, Colton. Knocks that one in also. That's a good feeling right there. He's back quickly back got six, which is more than his season average of five. So. How much do you it. want to bet Henryville know where he's at now? <laughs> yeah, they'll find him. That's a deep three for Kramer. Misses that one. I found the hot hand again. Russell with the rebound. Comes back around. Now you got Kenton Chase driving baseline. Yes, sir. Goes up and gets that one. That's a good way to finish the quarter yeah, right there. That's a great way to finish the quarter. So Senators do lead 14 to 9 after one here. We're going to step away, have a commercial from United Producers, and we'll be back. United Producers, Inc. We are the largest livestock marketing company in the world. We currently have 17 auction markets and 23 direct buying stations across Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, Michigan, Tennessee, and Illinois. Our goal is to market your livestock to maximize your dollar while implementing animal safety procedures. To find your local market, visit our website at uproducers.com or contact Ryan Bat at 812-620-0769. Again, that is 812-620-0769. Farmer owned, farmer values. Back to live action here at T. Kermit Tower Gymnasium where the Senators do lead. 14 to 9 over the Hornets of Henryville. Really good closeout there for the Senators. They went on a five point run. Um, we see Hayden Morrow check in. I really like Colton knocking them down them threes. Yeah. That just makes his confidence grow. Yep. And then you get to come in the sectional time and get a little confidence behind you. Watch out. Yeah. He can definitely light it up real quick. Yes, he can. Number four also checked into the game, Gavin Cooper for Henryville. Head looking to get into the lane. Uh -huh. That's going to be a foul. Dustin O'Bannon goes down the lane, the sophomore. Uh, Jackson Cameron picked up that foul. First of the quarter for the Senators. Head kicks it back out and around. That's a three-point miss. Hayden Morrow with the rebound. Off to Kenton Chase, and back we go the other way are the Senators. Senators setting up their offense, moving it around. Back to Cameron. Cameron looking to go towards the baseline. Nothing there. They find Hayden Morrow. Morrow with the floater. That one good. Hayden Morrow chips in his first two-point bucket of the night. Senators looking to get some offense going. Henryville the same way. Henryville on about a four-minute scoring drought here.
Brody White checked in and he got the ball and then it looked like nobody was going to take it from him. So that's a turnover there for the Hornets. Senators come back the other way quickly. Kenton Chase down the lane. Spin move. That one no good. Head with the rebound. That evens up the rebounds at five apiece. That's White for three. Knocks that one in. Brody White makes it 16-12, Senators. Hand to the drought there, didn't he? Yeah. Just under six minutes to go here in the first half. They feed it to Hayden Morrow. Morrow with the floater again. That one a little long. Head with the rebound. Had two dribbles down the lane. Going to get fouled. I don't know if they're going to get Titan or Kenton here. Who'd they give that foul to? Uh, they gave it to Titan. Titan. Titan picked up his first, first for the Senators of this quarter. So this is where Head can be really dangerous on these out-of-bounds plays underneath. They float it into him, but it's going to be a turnover. Unable to handle it. Kenton Chase out the other way. Goes up. Layup's good for him. Time out. Kenton Chase now has four points in this one. Going to be a timeout. We're going to stay with you here. The Senators just out to a to a really good start here. We haven't seen the Senators really get this this kind of start, you know, probably since the Crawford game. Oh yeah, they, they're playing with some energy right now, getting up and down the floor. I like to see this. You know, they got they got the guys that are getting up and down the floor to score the basketball. Let's go on and do it. You know, and it's and it's one of those. It's even harder to do on a back-to-back -back night. You know, the Senators did play last night, as did the Hornets, but the Senators were in a little more of a dogfight than the Hornets were. So. Um, yeah, we were really in that game the whole way. Yeah. We just couldn't get over the hump, you know. We just got, kind of got stuck there, and we just couldn't get over the hump. It was a good game. Yeah, it really was, but we just couldn't get over the hump. Yeah, those of you at home, you're watching the Senator Cheer Clinic over there get, getting after it with their uh, stomps and claps and everything. So great job by those uh, varsity cheerleaders and the varsity cheer coaches getting that uh, cheer clinic going and getting it um, active here tonight at the game. Yeah, good job. There's a ton of kids, a ton of them. Oh, yeah. How many would you think? Oh, I don't know. There's probably 40, 50? Yeah, at least. Maybe more. Well. <clears throat> so, Henryville going to take this one out all the way under their own bucket. 5.27 left to go here in the second. Quickly inbounded. Senators come out in that 1 2 1 1 trap. In the corner to White again. Misses that one. Rosenbaum with the rebound. Strong, be strong. Russell kicks it to Rosenbaum. Rosenbaum for three. Steps mm. into that one and knocks it down. A He's now got five. A step in three, man. It's, uh, it's a good feeling when you knock it yep. down. Step right into yep. it and knock it down. You hit some of those in your career. Yeah, maybe a couple. <laughs> A couple probably close to 50 at least. <laughs> Step in three. So Henryville comes back out, sets up their offense, tries to get something going here. They've been on a scoring drought, just haven't been able to get it going here. Working it around the perimeter. There's a three-point make by Barber. He quickly has seven to lead all scorers. Nash Abels pulls up at the oh. elbow, no good. Head looks to rebound it, but doesn't want to risk it and grab it and go out of bounds, so just lets it go out. Abels comes out after that one. Ball comes into Barber. Head goes straight down to the post and looks to post up Titan Williams. Swing it around. That's Barber. Misses that one. Kenton had a nice block out there. Yeah. He wasn't going to let him get to that ball. <laughs> going to have to go over the top to get it. So, mm -hmm. Right at the halfway mark here in the second. You know, he, he plays really smart. He don't get in foul trouble for all the rebounds he gets. You know, yeah. you think maybe you get aggressive over the back calls and stuff like that. 
Jackson Cameron with a nice look there at the baseline. Knocks it in. Hornets still content to work it around the perimeter, trying to find anybody down inside to get a feed. That one blocked. Senators come out with the rebound. Swing it over to Titan Williams. Jackson Cameron go. in the corner. Mm. Misses that one, but tight, or sorry, Ian Rosenbaum there to get a hand on it, but can't control it. So that's the first three point miss for the Senators tonight. Going to be a 30 second timeout. We're going to step aside, have a commercial from the Youth Foundation. We'll be back in just a moment. In every family, small conversations can make a big impact. I grew up on tour with my parents. Kind of different, but we bonded over music and we talked. Honest conversations, like when my dad shared his experiences as an alcoholic. Your honesty gave me a sense of integrity that I wanted in my own life. And I wanted you to know from someone who's been in recovery more than 30 years now, that hard work is what creates success, not alcohol or other drugs, in whatever you do. Talk, they hear you. Back to action here at T. Kermit Tower Gymnasium on the Ron Smith Court where the Senators do lead 23 to 15. Have to finish this quarter out there with yeah. the first one. Exactly, if we can do that, that'll be great. Mm -hmm. And it's still working it around the perimeter. Kit and Chase with the steal. Going to go all the way and lay that one in. Good finish. Kit and Chase now with six. Fed underneath the head. He goes up and puts that in. That's his second bucket of the night. Just get their offense rolling. Tighten to Jackson back out to <clears throat> Russell, who then goes back to Cameron in the corner. And whenever you keep it on that side yeah. for a long time like that, playing back and forth. You're exactly right. That's Bad what they've thing. done. They've gone back and forth, forth, back and forth on that side. So You're not making the defense move too much, you know. I knew those back picks were going to get dangerous. Finally, they get it in. Look at Russell. Russell leaves it off to Cameron. Back over. Kind of a careless pass there for the Senators. That's their second turnover. That's good, though. That's only our second turnover. Yeah, that's what I've got us for. Good deal. The official, unofficial live stream stat of the night. <laughs> I'm going to go with it because it seems like they've been taking care of the ball. Yeah. So, Hornets still working the ball around the perimeter. They find it out. Wide for three, that's a miss. Kenton Chase with the rebound. Nice job there by him to go up and get that one. Gonna be a foul on Levi. Ooh, nope, they didn't give it to 22. They gave it to two, Dustin O'Bannon. His first. Mm. They get it underneath to Colton Brown, who is able to save it around his back off of the Hornets. That was a tough place to get him the ball. Yeah. yeah. He couldn't really go up with it. Nothing really he could do there. So here's a hard place to inbound the ball. <laughs> you don't see it very often, do you? Yeah. Uh. That one just taken right away. Turnover number three for the Senators. 25-17 here, 117 left to go, head in the post. Gonna make a turn, gonna travel. travel. Gonna travel, I'm not so sure about that one. I don't have to I'll, say. I'll take the call, but. I'll take it, but I don't know so much about it. Yeah. Looks like a pretty good post <laughs> move to me. Pretty good post move. So, Senators with 108 here to go in the second. Kenton Chase gets by, gets up to the rim, going to get that one blocked. Yeah. 
Hornets come back looking to cut into that lead. Hornets content, maybe even hold for the last shot here, 40 seconds. Head with it in the lane. Nice move by him. That one goes up. Rosenbaum going to pick up that foul. Just going with him, never beat him to the spot. In that case, you got to beat him to the spot and make him then go up. Never got there, so he was always on his hip. Aiden Head going to go to the line where he's a 79% free throw shooter. Knocks that one in. Cuts the lead to seven. Had two dribbles, lets it fly. That one also good. He's got a good shot on him, too. Yeah. Look good and smooth. Titan Williams comes into the game. Ball inbounded directly to him. Kenton Chase across the timeline, hands it off to Holden Russell, back to Chase on the baseline, leaves it to Rosenbaum. Oh, my goodness. Who's going to get that one blocked by head. And we get a turnover back the other way. Last shot now. Uh, and turn it over again. Anything. Well, they turned it over. <laughs> it's gotten super <laughs> sloppy here in the last about 10 seconds. Whatever you can do, I can do yeah. better. <laughs> Four seconds to go here. Senators <laughs> lead by six. I like a spinning, I like a mirror beach team. Yeah. Turn over, turn over, turn over. Rosenbaum going to take this one out. Uh, good pass. Good, look at this. There we go. What a play there look by the this. Senators. That's Colton Brown laying that one in. He's going to get the final two of the quarter. Senators going to lead by eight going sure. into the halftime break here. Uh, let's run down some scoring on the Senate for the Senators. Colton Brown leads the team with eight points. Kenton Chase has six. Ian Rosenbaum has five. Jackson Cameron with four. And then Holden Russell and Hayden Morrow both chip in two. For the Hornets, they are led in scoring by Hayden Barber with seven. Brody White has three. Cody Kramer has three. And Aiden Head has six. Senators were 0 of 2 from the free throw line. They were 9 of 15 from two-point range for 60%, 3 of 4 from three-point range for 75%. So overall, they were 12 of 19 for 63%. The Henryville Hornets were 2 of 2 from the free throw line. Both of those made by Aiden Head. Bennett with a... Ooh, almost. Almost made it there, Bennett Deaton with that shot. So close. <laughs> so the... Hornets were two of five from two-point range for 80%. They were three of 12 from three-point range for 25%. So overall, they were seven of 17 for 41%. Uh, rebounding, the Senators had the edge nine to six turnovers. Five for the Senators, six for the Henryville Hornets. So with that, we're going to go ahead, step aside, have our commissioner's corner, an extended break here while you watch some of the um, – festivities down on the floor with the cheer clinic so we will be back right after this It's time for the Commissioner's Corner, an exclusive weekly conversation about Indiana high school sports with the Commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Neidig. Now for an up-to-the-minute report about what's happening in the constantly changing world of high school sports, here's Coach Bob Lovell with Commissioner Paul Neidig. Welcome into the Commissioner's Corner. I'm Brendan King in for the Coach Bob Lovell who is enjoying some vacation time this week and it is a very special guest with us on the Commissioner's Corner, be it the assistant Assistant Commissioner of the IHSAA, Janie Ulmer, is with us taking some time on CC today. Janie, really appreciate the time and what I know is a busy time for you all at the IHSAA, wrapping up last weekend with the Wrestling State Finals and jumping into a whole lot this coming weekend. We'll touch on that in a minute. But just to recap things down at Evansville, how did everything roll with the Wrestling State Finals? 
You know what? It was an amazing event. It was actually my first time being at Wrestling State Finals. I was there on Friday, and the energy was still in the place. Lots of excitement from the athletes to the coaches to the community, uh, families. It, it was a really exciting place to be. On Friday, uh, obviously, we were in Evansville. And then on Saturday, we had another day of state finals. And then we also had semi-state girls basketball. Right. Well, I mean, busy month in general, for sure. Jenny Omer, the assistant commissioner of the IHSAA, is with us. Jenny, I know it took some extra planning just because a little event called the NBA All-Star Game was in Indianapolis. And that's where we usually had the wrestling state finals. But for you, how was Evansville as a host they were so welcoming and so uh just just a great uh event place to be they were honored to have us uh you know they made every accommodation that they could and it it was a great event well diving into what's coming up this weekend janie first of all the ihsaa girls basketball state finals i know the boys swimming and diving finals are coming up as well let's touch on that first and you could talk about the logistics of the swimming and diving finals Absolutely. So as you know, Indiana is a great swimming and diving state all across the country. We have some of the best athletes. And so we are pretty excited again to be able to host our both boys swimming and diving at the IU Natatorium, which is nationally recognized for its facility. So that's very cool. Uh, Carrie Rosati is in charge of boys swimming and diving, and she's been working with those teams and those coaches and those athletes to get prepared for Friday and Saturday. The Assistant Commissioner of the IHSAA, Janie Ulmer, with us on the Commissioner's Corner. I'm Brendan King, and for Coach Bob Lovell. Janie, I'm sure this weekend, too, especially means a lot to you after you played at LaPorte High School. I think you were also an assistant coach there, based off what I read. First of all, just the girls' basketball state finals. As a former player, as a former coach, now as an administrator in the IHSAA, what does this all boil down to, and what does it mean to you? You know, it means so much to me, especially because right now there seems to be an energy all across the state on female sports and especially girls basketball. Uh, Today, just this morning, we met with our top eight teams that will be competing on Saturday at Cambridge Fieldhouse. And, you know, it was pretty exciting to be in the place that the All-Stars just competed in on Sunday. And then we have this world-class basketball facility for our girls state finals this coming Saturday. So we're walking through the gym thinking, okay, there's some pretty great athletes that have played here and we get to host our event. So that's been exciting. I do want to thank Indiana Fever, Indiana Pacers, Pacers Sports Entertainment, and our Indiana Basketball Coaches Association because we're doing something a little different this year. On Friday, on the day of practice, in the middle of the day, they are hosting and sponsoring a luncheon for us at Cambridge Fieldhouse mm-hmm. to highlight these eight teams, their coaches, and just to celebrate girls' sports in general. So that's a new thing we're adding this year, and uh, the, the girls seemed really excited about it. That's awesome, and I know how special it is to play in a facility like that. But, you know, Jenny, I'm from Illinois, and you know that's something that we did not have in playing in these world-class facilities over there. So I'm sure whenever the athletes come up to you, whether it's media day today or a little bit later on this week, I, I could imagine you see the glow in their eyes every single year based on they get to play in these amazing places. You know, they really do. And, and the, the teams brought one or two players today to be a part of a little video that we're putting together and to see their eyes as they walk on that floor. And Cambridge does a great job of welcoming us because they have our graphics up on all their screens as those girls walked through today. So I think it felt a little more real to them. But yet it's just it's just an amazing opportunity to play there. Jenny Ulmer, the assistant commissioner of the IHSAA, with us on the Commissioner's Corner. I'm Brendan King in for the Coach Bob Level. Jenny, appreciate the time today. Have a terrific weekend. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to The Commissioner's Corner with IHSAA Commissioner Paul Neidig and Coach Bob Lovell. And thank you for your continued support of the high schools in your community.
Back to live action here at T. Kermit Tower Gymnasium where the Senators do lead 27-19. Going to give a big shout out to my girls broadcasting partner, Mr. Ryan Bat. He uh, just messaged me and said he loved our crowd cam, said that that is the game changer. I'm going to agree with him. So It is. <laughs> Your daughter's doing a good job yeah. using it. I mean, it is really, really cool. How lucky to have that thing. You know I mean, like, yeah. that was awesome. You so take it down the way on the floor. Yeah, so those of you sitting at home right now, that's our, our crowd cam. She's got it pointed at the uh, at the, the um, huddles and at the free throw line during the game. And then 
during timeouts and stuff, she goes and gets the crowd. So, um, you know, just a just kind of a game changer thing out there. So, and a huge shout out to the cheerleaders and the, the cheerleader coaches. Yeah, that was really neat to watch. Man. Yeah, it was it was one of the best cheer clinics I've ever seen. I here. know it was me too. I was kind of sitting there just amazed by what they were doing. Yep, like learning the cheers and stuff and different things. That was really good. And the school fight song and yeah. you know dances and stuff. So, great job by those. Uh, coaches and the cheer team, yeah. and the parents. The parents, yeah, for parents the kids. getting them here. Yeah. So, always, I always leave out the parents for getting them here. Yeah. But I remember, I I get kids everywhere, and I'm sure yeah. you yeah, <laughs> you drive kids lot. everywhere. So, work, practice, the home, to eat, to just all the go constantly. Wait, work. you get dinner sometimes? <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> I saw what you ate last night. It was nachos. Yeah. <laughs> at the have, game. I did have nachos for dinner last night. Tonight so far I've had a Hershey and M&M's. Well, well, I'm right there with you. I got a Snickers. <laughs> so. I'm, ki I'm killing the food game. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> don't Definitely don't test my cholesterol or no, my – No, uh, not here. <laughs> so. Hornets going to handle the ball here. They get it in. Work it around the perimeter. A little more of what we saw in the first half. They're going to be content to work it around and fire threes. That one missed, but able to get their own rebound and then kick it out for another three-point attempt. That one missed. Rosenbaum comes out with that rebound. Hand it off to Rosenbaum. Goes down the lane. A couple of moves. Nothing going there. Going to set up the offense again. Kenton Chase looks to direct the offense. They give it off to Jackson Cameron. Back to Chase. Chase goes baseline, kicks it out to Rosenbaum. Rosenbaum follows him down the lane. A little floater there. That one left short. Head with the rebound. And Hornets back the other way. 27-19. Just under a minute now. Minute 15 played here in the third. Both offenses are moving really slow right now. Yeah. But Rosenbaum sticks his hand in, able to tie that one up. Going to get possession of that. So great job there by Ian to get a hold of it. I think if we come through the next couple minutes here of this third quarter, yeah, they, put a few buckets up there, I think we might be able to stretch this one away. Stretch it out a little bit. Tighten a couple dribbles against head. Doesn't get anywhere. Gives it back to Chase. Feeds it back down into Titan in the post. Over to Rosenbaum. Rosenbaum with a mismatch right here. Goes baseline. Nothing going there. Looks to get it up. Unable to do so. So back to Chase out top. Set up the offense again. That was a nice move. Yeah, nice fadeaway there by Ian Rosenbaum. He's now got seven. Makes it a 10-point lead here for the Senators. We're going to see Colton Brown check in at the next timeout. Holden Russell gets his hand on that one, deflects it, but doesn't get a hold of it. One more pass into the corner. Then they go in the middle to head, back out. So it's kind of a, an inside out here. There's a three-point put up. That's a miss, but able to get their own rebound. Leaves it to head at the elbow. Little jumper for him, knocks that one in. He now has eight. Going to be a 30-second timeout here. Keith, what do you need to do when Head catches the ball at the elbow there? That's a very dangerous spot. It is a dangerous spot, and he seems like he's a pretty good player from that spot, too. We can't let him get hot. You know, that's the last thing we want right now, him catch fire and knocks down some of these little mid-range jumpers and then get in there and get some offensive rebounds for putbacks, too. So we got to make sure we contain him, but... We just don't want him to get going. Yeah, you're exactly right. You know, you don't want him to get going because he can light it up real quick and in a hurry. But it's amazing whenever they, they have the ball out here on offense, they kick it down to him in the post, how everybody claps on our team for defense yeah. because he draws <laughs> that much attention. Well, and it's a lot like um, the Mitchell kid that we played last night, maybe a little more athletic, a little more true big, not much of a slasher, but a, a true, true big. True big, true big. Um, you know, so it's it's not something they're not used to. They just played 32 minutes of this exact same game. Mm -hmm. Jackson Cameron brings it across half court. Senators lead by eight. 
Kicks it to Chase. Good ball fight, Colton. Oh. Nice bounce pass, but probably should have been a chest pass there. In the corner to Russell, back around top to Chase. Over to Brown. Brown looks in the corner, nothing going there. Feeds it into the lane almost. <clears throat> Leaves it off to Cameron. Senator's really working the ball here. Going to be a turnover, though. Jackson Cameron unable to handle that one. First, second turnover of the half for the Senators. Head with a little reverse. Leaves that one short. Henryville definitely knows where Colton is on uh, yeah. defense. They After he knocked down those two, two yeah. early threes, they found him yeah. real quick. Good pass. Rosenbaum now has nine. Henryville looking to swing it around. They get a jumper there. That one missed badly. Out ahead to Cameron. Cameron looks to go. Oh, somebody take care of the ball. <laughs> Kenton Chase finally gets it. Little give and go action there. Nice move there by Rosenbaum to seal that off. Now he's got 11. First, sorry, second player in double digits. Aiden Head also has 10. We well, paid so much attention to him, we left him alone, you know what? <laughs> Ian Rosenbaum with a nice rebound there after it goes off the backboard because he can't get a hold of it. Colton Brown in the corner to Russell, back to Brown. A little floater misses that one. Head with the rebound, and off the Hornets come. There's a deep three. That one falls in for Hayden Barber. He's now in double digits with 10. And they shoot the threes, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, already four in this half. It just seems like so many more than that, don't it? Yeah. Like to me it does. Get in there, Colton. Colton looks to stroke the three. No good. That one's going to go out of bounds. The travel There's a here. deep three. Is that 14? It is. Barber with another three. Back to back for him, ain't yep. it? Cuts the lead now to four. Cameron in the corner. Decides not to pull the trigger on that one. Going to be a timeout for Coach Cummings. He's going to take a full timeout. So we're going to step away, have a commercial break from United Producers and Ryan Bat. We'll be back in just a moment. United Producers, Inc. We are the largest livestock marketing company in the world. We currently have 17 auction markets and 23 direct buying stations across Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, Michigan, Tennessee, and Illinois. Our goal is to market your livestock to maximize your dollar while implementing animal safety procedures. To find your local market, visit our website at uproducers.com or contact Ryan Bat at 812-620-0769. Again, that is 812-620-0769. Farmer owned, farmer values. Back to live action here on T. Kermit Tower, in T. Kermit Tower Gymnasium on the Ron Smith Court, where the Senators do lead 33-27. And find some offense here. Senators inbound it straight to Rosenbaum, steps into another three, strokes that one. That's a good answer, ain't it? Yeah, that's, that's exactly how you answer. Henryville works it around the perimeter again. They get it in the middle of the head. Head one step, nothing going there. One more pass. That one's out to Cooper. He misses that one. Senators with the rebound, and away we go.
There's a three for Rosenbaum, misses that one. Back to back three for him. Right? Cooper misses that one, but Russell able to rebound it out ahead to Rosenbaum. Oh no. That's a, a good block there by Aiden Head. Helps Ian up afterwards. Well, he sprained his ankle. Just kind of stepped a little funny, I think. Aiden Head's first personal. That's why I think we need an injury. Yeah, you're exactly right. Especially Ian. Ian going to step to the line. First one up and good. I make it feel better. Yeah. <laughs> you yep. knock down that free throw, maybe a little injury, a little tweak and something. Yeah. Yeah. Always makes you feel a little better. He's a 69% free throw shooter on the year, so looking to knock this second one down. Make it a nine point lead for the Senators. He does. So 38 29, or 38 27, sorry. Hornets going to inbound the ball. Minute 19 to go here in the third. Hornets quickly get it into head. Head looks to turn and shoot, doesn't. Barber fires a three. Rosenbaum with that rebound. Kenton Chase off to Morrow. Morrow swings it to Cameron. Cameron with a little floater. That good one up and good. Good pass by Hayden. Good finish by. That's an 11 point lead for the Senators. We're going to get a foul. I believe Kenton Chase is going to pick this one up, his first. Oh, nope. They're going to give it to Rosenbaum. His, his first. His first. I had him for two, but. Unofficial, official, right? Yeah, unofficial, official. Nope. Not going to be Ian's. Going to be 22, Kenton Chase. Well, you were right. There we go. I thought it was Kenton. Yeah. Henryville inbounds the ball. Looks like a three going to be fired there. They don't pull the trigger. Get after it, Hayden. Oh. Hayden on the ground. Henryville on top of him. Love it's going to be Senator Ball. Love that effort, though. Yeah. He laid it all out for that. Awesome. Rosemont gets it in. They go right back to him. Just under 30 seconds to go here. Back to Rosenbaum. Senators looking to hold here for the last shot. Still looking for That's that it. shot. Rosamond with the fadeaway. That one no good, so going to miss that one. Look That's at that angle right there. Yeah. How neat is that on the, on the TVs at home, on your monitors or whatever? That's so so impressive. <laughs> it really is. So going to have Chuck-a-Duck now. So we're going to stay live with you because I want to see who wins this one. we got all kinds of kids here. There's going to be all kinds of ducks flying. You know, Chuck it up, kind of a staple here at West Washington. That money goes, I believe, to the junior class to help with the uh, prom, I think. Wish might bring us one up here. You don't realize how hard it is to get a duck that close. You would think that <laughs> yeah. it would be super easy, no. but it's, it's it looks, not. <laughs> it looks super hard, really, it does. Especially with the lift on a duck. Yeah, yeah. No, we don't have one in the red yet, but oh, there's, there's two on the edge. Two on the edge. Look at that. Almost, almost. Oh, that Ooh. was. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. In the spirit of ducks, you know what the ducks have when he bought lipstick? No. Put it on my bill. There you go. There you go. <laughs> oh, dad joke. Oh. <laughs> That'll work. Yeah, put it on my bill. Work. Put it on my bill. <laughs> oh, 
on. Now we got some dancing going. We got the Casper slide rolling. So still waiting to see who the winner of Chuck a Duck is tonight. Senators start the fourth, leading by 13. Eight minutes to go here for the Senators. Uh, really need to get the, the final quarter playing well like they did the first quarter. So, first and second quarter. Yeah, we need to finish this right here. This is, yeah, we've finish, been playing some decent basketball. Strong. We need to finish strong here. Up by 13 going in the fourth. Extend it out here. Head with the ball. He swings it around to Kramer. Oh, there's a turnover. Leaves it off to Cameron. Oh, there's Colton. Nope. Right. Get in there, Hayden. Hayden with the three. That one no good. I think that one off of Ian's shoe. He's not had very good luck the past couple of days. Last night he had two or three dives that he took after a ball, and it, you know, rolled off his foot or... Hayden's being all aggressive with his yeah. hands on defense. Getting some good nice feed underneath the Colton Brown. He's now got 10. I'm glad to see Colton coming on right around sectional yeah, time. Yeah, we, we need him come sectional time. So, Senators with a 42-27 lead here. Hornets still content to put it around the perimeter, work it into head once, and then right back out. Senators looking for that cutter that they send through, gives it off to Rosenbaum. Jackson Cameron, the cutter through. Hayden Morrow comes back through the other way. Comes to Cameron on the wing, out to Colton Brown, to Morrow. Morrow down the lane, little floater. That one up and no good. Rebounded by the Hornets. They kick ahead. That one left way short. That's the 10th three-pointer that they've shot this half and only made two. So Man, they're really living they're, and dying, they're by, living the and dying by the three. <clears throat> And it ain't looking so good right now. Yeah. Russell tries to drive, kicks it out to Rosenbaum. Back to Chase. Chase down the lane. Morrow gets back into the lane, leaves it off to Chase again. He gets in the lane, kicks it to Cameron Come for on, a three. Jackson. Yes, Steps sir. in and knocks that one down. Jackson Cameron with nine. Aiden Head gets into the lane. Nice jump stop. Puts that Ooh. one up, and it's good. What a tough shot. That's 12 for him tonight. Holden Russell across half court. Gets it to Rosenbaum. Rosenbaum back door to Russell. Russell misses that layup. Rebounded by the Hornets, and back the other way we go. Head with a nice turnaround. Left that one, but they get Hornets get the rebound. Set up the offense again. Head tries to go again. They're going to get Holden Russell on the slap there. Mm. He gets his hand on the ball. But got the ball, but got arm too. So. Ooh, I don't know that he was going up for shooting. shooting I don't think so either. <laughs> but anyway, Head's going to step to the line. 79% free throw shooter on the year. He's one of one so far from the line. That's his 13th point tonight. The Henryville coach is not happy right now. He's saying he keeps on getting hit every time he shoots. He's letting him know about it. <laughs> He was not happy during the JV game either, so. G 
just under five to go here. Senators lead 45-31. Rosenbaum almost steps out. Head going to pick up that foul. His foul second. We were talking about wingspans last night. <laughs> yeah. Who do you think is longer? I don't his know. I think his is pretty long. Yeah, his almost looks longer than that. He's almost reaching up here to us. So. Yeah. Titan Williams gets the ball inbounded to him. Comes back to Morrow. Morrow looking to go baseline. Nice layup for Hayden Morrow. That's what he looks playing good basketball. He's got four. Another one. Another three. Rosenbaum with the rebound. Oh, I knew it was going to be dangerous. Turnover for the Senators. They try to get it ahead, but doesn't quite work out for them. In Might the corner, well. one more. Travel. <laughs> I've got them shooting 23 threes already. 23 in the second half. Yeah. And they're two for 23? Uh, 23 total. They're five for 23 in the game. Five for 23. Yep. Wow. So, you're right. Live and die by the three for sure. Kitten Chase looks to get by his defender. Leaves it off to Russell. Russell with the 15-footer. Leaves that one short. Head with the rebound. Goes in the middle of the head. He's got that elbow jumper, knocks it in. Okay, look, he's got that shot down. Right? Yeah, that's a that's a shot that they need to find him more. He's got 16 points tonight. Um, you know, just playing a, a good overall game. Going to be a full timeout here. So we're going to step aside, have a commercial break, and we'll be back in just a moment. In 2012, the Washington County Community Foundation began working on its next big initiative, Education Matters. The goal of Education Matters is to increase the educational attainment of adults residing in our county. The initial focus has centered on adults with some college and no degree. With the assistance of scholarships and a peer mentoring program, the foundation began helping adults return to college to complete their degree or obtain a certification in 2013. Realizing that strength lies in numbers, Washington County partnered with Clark, Floyd, Harrison, and Scott counties to create Education Matters Southern Indiana. This initiative continues to build. Back to live action here at T. Kermit Tower Gymnasium on the Ron Smith Court where the Senators do lead 47-33, 3.51 to go here in the fourth. Senators looking to get win number eight of the year. They've got 351 to hold on to this 14 point lead. Gonna be Senator Ball out of bounds. Might see a little pressure here, yep. Craig. Gonna see a full court press. Comes into Kenton Chase quickly with the turn and he's coming ahead, leaves it off to Cameron, kicks it out to Colton Brown around to Russell. Over to Rosenbaum, Rosenbaum looks to get in the lane, back to Russell, kicks it in the corner to Cameron. There he goes. See you later. Nice bucket there by Kenton Chase. Just that little hesitation dribble right there got him freed up, and boom, he was gone. Yeah. 49-33. Center's on the ground again. Head with a nice spin move. Going to get a foul here. Going to be on Ian Rosenbaum. Out comes Colton Brown. Hey, Morrow back in for Brown. Hornets finally get it into the corner. Swing it to head. 16-foot jumper. Leaves that one short, but nobody blocks him out. Gets his own rebound and then goes to the corner. There's going to be another foul. Hayden Morrow checks into the game and very quickly, he's got his first foul. Oh, somebody found him. That one down. And misses it. They get their own rebound. So two misses. A rebound for them and a rebound for the Senators. Let's 
3.52 to go here, 49-33. Going to pick up a foul there on Gavin Cooper. Going to be his first. Senators go with a stack over here. Comes into Kenton Chase in the backcourt. He quickly gets by everybody, kicks it to Cameron in the corner. Rosenbaum thinks about it, gives a spin move. All kinds of moves, nothing going there for him. So Kenton Chase comes back, looks to get in the lane. Rosenbaum with the screen, leaves it off to him now. A little two-man game here. Cameron over to Russell, back to Cameron. Cameron puts that one up, it's no good. Head with the rebound. Oh, good hand. Hey, Morrow with the steal again. Right hand. Oh. Good job, Jackson. Jackson Cameron gets it tipped away at first, but then gets that one up. That's 11 for him, 51-35. I bet Hayden's got three or four steals, man. Yeah. Yeah, Just go. too good a position there for Head underneath. He's got 18 out ahead to Morrow. Morrow going to go to the other side of the bucket this time for that layup. He's now got six. 138 to go. Had a couple of dribbles, swings it back to the guards. There's a three-point make in the corner for Barber. He's got 16. Go again, Hayden. Morrow quickly by, gives it to Cameron in the corner. Nothing going there. Back to Chase out top. Nice job there to get on the floor and get that one. So we see four, I believe it was, nope, four Hornets check into the game. We also see four Senators check into the game. So, oh, no, three Senators check into the game. Rosenbaum and Kenton Chase going to stay in. Comes into Kenton Chase on this side. Man, he's so fast. Look at this. Yeah. See you later. Oh, and he got a rebound. He's just padding his stats Yeah, now. padding his stats there. So, Kenton Chase, that puts him in double digits with 10. That's a three-pointer for Gavin Cooper, his first bucket of the night. Senators lead by 12. I believe we're going to have a 30-second timeout. We're going to stay with you. 55.9 to go here. Senators lead 55-41. Um, just a heads up on the programming for the rest of the week. We do have a game Friday here in T. Kermit Tower Gymnasium with Shoals and West Washington. Then the next time you'll hear West Washington live stream and WWSR in action will be Tuesday at Borden for the first game of sectional 61, which we will bring you, which is West Washington and Christian Academy. Then after that, we will bring you also the second game, which is Lanesville and South Central. Following that, we will bring you both Friday games and the Saturday games. So we've got five games next week at Borden that we're going to bring you. And you know, I was telling you, South Central last night, I was listening to that game with them playing Corden last night. I'm thinking they beat Corden by 30 last night. Yeah, South so Central, Central might be playing some really good basketball yeah, right now. South Central plays really good basketball. Yeah. So. You know, everybody's talking about Christian Academy and Borden. South Central could play the spoiler on that side of the yeah, bracket. Yeah, like I said, for them to beat Corden, Corden's not that bad of a team. Yeah. For, but they were saying that, I guess they were on fire last night too, they well, were talking about. But you know what? Sometimes it happens, but I think they were playing good basketball too. Well, Cash Long steps to the line, misses that one. I was going to say, his dad was sitting right in front of us. That was your chance. We could have got him on the air while Cash was shooting free throws. I know. He was there. <laughs> he moved. He knew we were going to put him on the yeah. air. So Cash steps back to the line for his second one. That one up. It's also no good. Quickly ahead. That's Cooper for three. Stuck it. Well, now we're going to see. Oh, there we go. Colton Brown. Colton Brown getting up. I thought we were going to see Nash Abels get up. Colton but Brown getting up there with a the rim. I thought we were going to see Nash Abels go up and get a hold of that one and throw it down since it was stuck. <laughs> <Yeah. so. laughs> 
Oh. Ball comes in, but that's going to be a turnover for the Senators. Oh, my good Lord. Hey, Morrow with the with the elevate I and know, that was not in Campbellsburg. His Sorry. defense is on point tonight. He <laughs> Take not, that back to Henryville. Yeah, he's not messing around with his defense tonight. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> well, and that's what we need. We need that kind of defense from Hayden Morrow. That's yes. the difference. You know, it's nice that he's chipped in six points tonight, but – you know, we don't need his, his scoring. We need his defense. Defense and his good decision-making and all the other things that go along with being a good basketball player. You ain't got to put it in the basket every time. Yeah. There's a lot of other things you can do to contribute. But, man, he's played good defense tonight. Yeah. Going to be a foul there. I believe that's five, so... Add to his total here. Yeah, we're going to see Hayden Morrow go to the free throw line where he's a 75% free throw shooter on the year. So, couple of dribbles for Hayden. See, look at this camera right here. How neat is this? Yeah. You know, I mean, sitting at home, you get the under the basket view, looking straight at the free throw shooter. Hey, we may be a small school in Southern Indiana, but we do it upright. I know, right? <laughs> Props to you. Look at this. I mean, look at this. How lucky. Couple of dribbles for Hayden. Let's that one fly. It's no good. We're going to quickly come back the other way. 56 41, 18 seconds to go here. Colton oh, Brown with the block. What? Not today. Nolan Long going to finish this one out. So great job by the Senators tonight. You know, they kind of kind of do it all. And really a, a great game overall by the Senators. Um, you know, just, just can't say enough about how they, how they played and what they were able to do. Yeah, the bounce back game from last night, Rock Creek. You know, like I said, they were in that game in Hawaii and then come home tonight. Back to back and get a 15-point win at home. Going into Shoals Friday night and then turning around Tuesday sectional. Looking pretty good right now. Looking pretty good. Yeah, definitely looking looking good for the Senators. So we're going to step aside, have a couple of commercial breaks, and we'll see if Coach Cummings comes out. Um, you know, he's he's I'm sure he's got lots to talk to his boys about. So we're going to play a couple of commercials, and like I said, we'll be back um, if Coach Cummings comes out. If not, we'll come back and wrap it up um, for tonight's game. So be back in just a moment. Gates, Carnegie, Rockefeller, I'm not. Generous, caring, rich in spirit, I am. You don't have to be a person of great wealth to make an impact. When caring individuals give through a flexible, creative, capable organization known as a community foundation, our philanthropic potential is unlimited. As your local community foundation, we provide you the opportunity to permanently support the causes you care about both near and far. We do this by protecting and administering permanent funds through thoughtful grant making to improve the quality of life in the community we serve. Simply put, donors who give through a community foundation build sustainable, permanent funds called endowments through contributions big and small to support organizations they care about most, forever. Through the generosity of our many donors and the responsible, informed investment of permanent funds, we will increase our grant-making ability for the benefit of our community for generations to come. All we need is you. What causes are you passionate about? What organization matters most to you? We can help you ensure your charitable interests are supported forever. Donors can give to an existing endowment or establish their own. Some choose to give now, while others make their gift later through their will or estate plan. To learn what your options are, talk to your community foundation. We're here to help you reach your philanthropic goals. If you love our community, let's leave our little corner of the world a bit better than we found it. Not just today, but for future generations too. The Washington County Community Foundation has been making our home a terrific place to live, work, and play since 1993 through the generosity of donors just like you. Why? Well, just like you, we also really love our community. We all make choices. 
When it comes to alcohol, kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Bye-bye. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. Yeah, have fun. Hey, Em, have a seat for a second. Remind me about that party again. Alex is just and adults make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations when it comes to alcohol and other drugs. They want guidance and honest answers to their questions. And it makes a difference when the message is consistent and part of everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. For more information about talking with your kids about underage use of alcohol and other drugs, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. Lynx Clothing and Shoes carries a wide variety of items from name brand clothing and shoes to sports apparel and sporting goods. We offer custom screen printing and embroidery, free gift wrapping alternations and layaway. Our hours are Monday through Thursday, 9 to 5.30, Friday 9 to 6, and Saturday 9 to 5. We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square and are a family owned and operated business. Stop by and see us today. 812-883-4154. Back to live action here at West Washington where the Senators um, were victorious tonight, 56 to 41. Um, you know, just an overall really good night for the Senators. You know, if you're looking for, um, you know, them if you're looking for something good, the Senators are looking to be on a roll. They, this is the best that they've played all year. So, you know, if, if they can continue this on into sectional play, going to be a very difficult team to uh, match up against. Keith, final thoughts? Yeah, everybody chipped in tonight, played really well. Good to get the 15-point win at home. See what happens Friday night with Shoals. Get that momentum going our way, going into sectional time. And you never know what can happen in postseason. Hey, it's a new season when you start that. That's what we were always told and taught. You know, this matters. The regular season matters. Once it's postseason, everybody's zero and zero. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, like I said, our upcoming schedule, we will be live with you Friday. Um, Bubba should be back for that one. He, he was a little under the weather today, so that's why he wasn't here. And I got to do a second game this week with Keith. So, um, should be back Friday for that matchup with Shoals. And then, like I said, next week we're at Borden for sectional, bringing you all five games there. Um, both Tuesday night games, both Friday night games, and then the Saturday night game. So with that, we're going to sign off, send everything back to regular programming, and we'll see you Friday night.